do this. Good morning, cocksuckers. Good morning, welcome, guys. Welcome to the church of what's motherfucking happening now. Joey D is here. Lee Sayak, co-host. What's going on, people? It's a beautiful motherfucking day to live. To be alive, let's spark this fucking joint and get the holy smoke cooking in this motherfucker. <laughs> Good over here at 5.30. You already had me smoking. I opened up this morning with a little fucking black Sabbath. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. You guys, uh, let me tell you something. When I was in my downest times, I started listening to Black Sabbath when I was like in the eighth grade. But when I was going through all my bullshit, Sabbath fucking saved me. Especially Sabbath. Put that. Let me explain something to you. This album came out in fucking 73. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. You look at the front cover. The front cover is them surrounding some fucking guy that's dying. When you turn the cover around, instead of that for those family members, it's the fucking devils fighting for his fucking soul. Jesus is fighting Satan. It's a beautiful album cover. It's got Killing Yourself to Live on there. Uh... Looking for today. Sabbath, bloody fucking Sabbath. Killing yourself to live tremendous fucking jam. But Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Some of our black Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. When I was 15 after my mother died, I listened to it. Let me tell you something. My mind was going fucking fire. Kill it, Lee. Sabbath, bloody cocksuckers. There you go. From the beginning, Lee. From the beginning. Listen to that fucking guitar. There you go. You're fucking up with this music already, Lee Cocksucker. It's the same music we played in the beginning. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little Sabbath early. You know what Sabbath does? It cleans out the fucking spirits, the bad spirits. As I call them, the Espiritos Malos. A lot of people are mad at me about the Mrs. Obama comment I met last night. Listen, I love Mrs. Obama. No disrespect to her. Let me tell you something. Uh, I said that you know I was going to eat her black little monkey. She's tremendous, Ms. Obama. So I'm sorry if you got offended. But here, I forgot to tell you, not only will I eat her black little monkey, I eat, I eat that black little fucking muffler, too. It probably smells like health. You understand me? <laughs> so beautifully, we're Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Kick that motherfucker. It's still playing. We'll turn it up loud. We're killing the bad spirits with the holy smoke. Here, take a hit, you fuck. <laughs> That's a boy, cocksucker. We're spreading it, man. This show's about getting up, being in a fucking good mood. People always hit me back, Joey, what the fuck are you in a bad mood about? Or what are you in a good mood about? I turn the music off. We're talking now. <laughs> in a good fucking mood in the morning. Because I got a picture of these guys here I grew up with. That's Dominic Special, Darren Rago, and Anthony fucking Balzano. And they're dead, and they died when we were young. This is the first thing I look at in the morning. I get in a fucking good mood because they're not here. So I got to do what the fuck they're not doing. So I got to cover the spread today. That's the mentality of the church of what's happening. Now you're thinking, Joey, what the fuck are your glasses? My glasses? <laughs> I don't want to be like one of those black basketball players. You see these motherfuckers? First, it all started about 20 years ago. Like uh, all these fucking uh, actors. Once they get a little older, they start wearing glasses. And, and I could see the husband, the wife saying, you look so sophisticated and so smart. Wear the fucking glasses. So they started with that bullshit. Now, I got Kobe, I got the guy in fucking Miami. Everybody's wearing fucking point dexter glasses for nine thousand dollars to look more intelligent. Get it together, cocksucker. You're a basketball player, not a scientist, all right? The fucking little Halloween costume ain't gonna work, bitches. What are you gonna do, Lee? I gotta drop <laughs> some knowledge on these cocksuckers early, because if not, they think I'm over here fucking around. Did you work out yesterday, Lee? Yeah, I did. Uh, What'd you do? I was supposed to have a training session, but uh, the woman apparently has too many trainers, so I went over to the gym at my complex. And I'm just starting out, guys. I don't know if anyone else is starting out, working out, too. I haven't worked out. I wrestled all throughout high school, and I probably haven't worked out since I stopped, since wrestling season stopped my senior year. So that's probably like six or seven years. So I'm starting out fresh, and I'm, do, I'm doing the, the stationary bike for like half an hour. And I can do the uh, elliptical for about 10, 15, and then I, then I, I pass out. But. That's all you fucking need to get the party started. What you want to do as a fat guy is get the fucking blood going. That's what I had to do. I mean, they threw me out of the Y the first time I walked in there. Really? The fucking little trainer. Because you sign up for the Y in Hollywood, and you go down there, and they give you like a, an evaluation to see where the fuck you're at. So uh -huh. I thought I was still like in high school. I went in like seven, eight years. I went right after the longest show. <clears throat> I thought I was still in high school. I could do a thousand jumping jacks and shit. He put me on the treadmill to start and put it on like 1.5. Let me tell you something, my friend. At the four minute mark, I tapped out. He was a little cute little gay guy. He goes, Listen, dog, I love you to death, but don't come back here till you stop smoking cigarettes, till you start getting it together. You can't even walk on the treadmill. So that's why I fucking started. Yeah. You know, I started at four fucking 15 when you walk a, a half a block and your joints hurt, your knees hurt, your feet. So I put the whole training session in my head. I, I knew. By going to the fucking wine that they have a, a heated pool. 
Mm -hmm. So I just started going to the heated pool and I would run back and forth and I would swim. Bro, and I would swim 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Then I got cocky and I overslept one night and I jumped into the Olympic pool because in Boulder, I used to be part of the master swimming program. What's that? The master swimming program is where you go at 6 in the morning and at 6 at night. And the lady's name was Jane and she would just work you like a fucking, like a fucking slave in the water. And she, Oof. right before I got locked up in prison, there was a UPS guy at the Hertz where I worked at. And he was in great shape. And I said, how'd you get in that fucking shape? And he goes, I started going to the master swimming program. Mm -hmm. Stop up the fucking volumes already. They're saying it's too low. Uh, okay. These fucking people always say it's too low. Put, put your ear next to the fucking <laughs> sink like when you were a kid and your mother was on in the other room. Like when you were listening to Richard Pryor. Album. So, uh, you go at six in the fucking morning in Boulder, Colorado in the dead of the fucking winter. And the pool would be outside, and they'd be surrounded by snow where they shoveled. And you'd have to fucking dress yourself in a little hut and fucking run out and jump in the pool. Oh, yeah. And you have to do two of those a day, a day, three times a fucking week. And she would train you for little triathlons. Not triathlons, the double ones. The ones where you swim and jump up and down for a half hour. Not really like all three of them ride your bike. That's yeah. a triathlon in Main Street. So I always like fucking swimming. Not to mention I'm Cuban, you know? You know me. I swam around the fucking island as a young man like a savage cocksucker. Oh, Jesus. So uh, I went back and I jumped into the Olympic pool and that's when I almost drowned. I almost drowned at the Yeah, water. that's a scary story, man. I don't, I don't know if people have heard it. Do you want to tell it again? or? Fuck no. I, I almost <laughs> drowned. I went to the Y. I jumped the fuck in the pool. And you know what? When you go into a training pool, it's heated. But when you go into a regular Olympic pool, it's not fucking heated. Well, it's that's a, a that's a it's a rush. different it's thirty degrees. So first thing you it surrounds your lungs. You can't fucking breathe. Mm -hmm. Here I am in the middle of the pool. My fat legs were just fucking moving. I wasn't going nowhere though. I, I just was spinning around like a motherfucker. Swimming's tough. I mean, it's, uh, I I used to swim. I used to work. I, were, I mean, I was never really in shape when I wrestled, but I was more in shape. And you run around the track, and you I I played football, and you run around the thing. And running and swimming are two different things. Swimming is tough. Especially when you're out of shape. It really shows you when you're out of shape. Like, wow, I am out of shape. But it gets you in the best shape. The problem with swimming and the exercise doesn't go with you the rest of the day. Like, when you run for a half hour, six in the morning, that raises your metabolism. It goes with you. You release sweat. When you mm -hmm. go in the pool, it burns the most calories per minute. Okay. But when you get out of the pool, you don't take it with you as much. It doesn't burn, like, throughout the whole fucking day. That's oh. the problem with swimming. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, as long as... I worked out yesterday. I had a good time. I went over there. I got on the treadmill, I hit the bag for a half hour, then I got on the treadmill uh, and ran, the, did the Mike Dolce, uh, mm -hmm. two minutes on and a half, and uh, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds of running. Yeah. And I got on the bike to close it out. Look at that shirt, it's fucking swelly right next to you. Today I might eat some sushi. I ain't got, I ain't got dick going on today, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it's, it's rough, man. I mean, it's uh, there's not much there's not much going on out there. I mean, I'm working on a TV show, but everything that's going to be in production's in production, and... I feel bad for you guys. I mean, there's not that much shooting right oh, now. Oh, I don't give a fuck about that. We're always doing something late. What the fuck? Did that? The show is about getting up in the fucking morning and going there, out there and tackling the fuck everything. You just got to make it happen. Yeah. There's always action out there. You got to just get up. You got to get up with the fucking mentality. You've seen Trading Places. That's great. The brother's at the end of the floor. Mortimer's on the floor <laughs> dying because your brother's dying. Fuck him. We got to do what the fuck we do here. You follow me? So don't worry about the fucking Weight Watchers or whatever. The big topic that I've been hearing about lately is Giselle Blanco. Let's break it down. I've never been fucking impressed with the cocaine cowboys, and I'll tell you why. Because they're talking about it in 1979. You know, I would go to Miami in 1970 as a kid. My, my mother baptized a girl down there, and I would go down there and spend time with them in the summer. I loved them, Rodolfo and Vivian. Vivian was a school teacher. Rodolfo was a construction mogul. He would go into, we, we built all that shit, the the, uh, the falls in Miami. It's the north, La Sauceda, as they say, southwest 100th Avenue and 130th. I was seven and eight, and I go down there, we clear bushes, me and the son and the daughters, and we do the whole thing. Now at night, the three kids would go to sleep, and I would hang out with Rodolfo. So Rodolfo knew my father. I mean, he grew up with my father, and he always assumed that I knew what my father did. So when I would go down there, I would stay with Rodolfo in the middle of the night, he go, come on, let's take a ride. And we go to La, uh, La Laquita. La Laquita in Miami is a little fucking, it's a gas station that doesn't sell gas. It's, <laughs> it, they just sell beer, milk, and bread. Okay. And cigarettes. And you can go there late night, but it's the coldest fucking beer you'd ever have. And we drive out to La Laquita, and he'd get, in the fucking, he'd get me a, a soda, but he'd let me drink out of his cold Budweiser. That was like a big treat for me. Oh, we'd of go course. to his boat. And we'd get on the boat and we'd go out like 10 fucking miles out and he'd pick up bales of weed. This is in the 70s. Jesus. And then we'd drive him back in like nothing. It was like stealing. They would float into this thing. He knew the people and that's what he did for a living, you know. 
And I remember going down there when, I, when you watch Gis, uh, Giselle, the documentary, they talk about how she ran shit in Miami in 79. By the fuck, 79 is when I started doing blow. What happened in 79 also, this all went down in 79, but what happened in 79 was Mario Litos came in. Those fucking Cubans that started killing people. 130,000 Cubans. Fidel let them out of their jails in 1979. 130,000? 130,000. 100,000 of them were fucking uh, in jail. Jesus Christ. And these Christ. weren't, you know, like for smacking their wife or something. These motherfuckers were in El Moro. This fucking jail where you walk around half naked and there's a hole in the middle of the fucking floor. And you got to go pee and shit in that fucking hole. And people tack you and take you in the fucking hole and fuck you in the ass after Ugh. your shit. So these were the type of criminals that came over. These are the type of criminal, I, you know, when he and Scarface, they showed the hand they call the abacuas and these people were fucking nuts for example my my stepfather's name is Juanito Cuatro Viento which means four winds and he had three brothers two of them came from Cuba at that time and four of his nephews or three of his nephews within the first year four out of the, three out of four nephews were dead and they shot his both both his brothers Jesus because Christ. they didn't know anything else they came out here and got into the fucking cocaine business and by that time it became Barracudaville that's where her claim to fame is that she shot. Now, let me explain something to you. I watched the first documentary, and I bought into it and bought it not. And then the second one was just a waste of my fucking time. But it's funny, because the other night when it happened, I read it in the afternoon, and I went out not thinking nothing of it. And I went out, and Rogan called me that night. He goes, hee hee, they shot his Blanco. And I go, fuck her. And we started laughing. It's like, you know what? The lady killed or supposedly killed all these fucking people, a two-year-old kid. You know what? She was walking around knowing it was coming. Yeah. If you, you know, one of the reasons why I got out of crime was one thing. You never want somebody to knock on your door when you're 50 fucking years old. You know, whatever you do at 20 is great. You don't want to do time at fucking 50 and above. You don't want to die in a fucking can. That's a, that's a, that's a bad fucking life. What is that? I uh, the, the ghost of the uh, Griselda. Griselda, that cocksucker. So you don't want to end up in, that was the biggest deterrent I had, was seeing my uncle in Miami go to jail at 50. And, you know, when he went to jail, he was a millionaire. And next thing you know, he's got to move into an apartment in Atlanta because the federal penitentiary is in Atlanta. Even though he was rocking in Miami, he had to move to Atlanta and put his kids in a two-bedroom apartment, three fucking kids. Jesus. So I see what it does to you. I see what it does to your family. But the worst thing is that you don't want to die in the can. And that's the worst thing about karma, man, that you're walking around. When you do something, like there's people in front of, in front of my house here that park and then go to work. Instead of parking for free parking, mm -hmm. they park back here because they don't want to do the sticker or some shit, and they park in front of my house. Every fucking day I wake up and I see the same cars, and I'm going to go over and stick a nail in front of them or flatten their fucking tire or scratch their door. You know, my stepdad was a fanatic about the spot in front of his fucking house. Oh, yeah, of on his On his, his mind, it belonged to him. Was it in New York? It was in Jersey, North oh, okay. Bergen, New Jersey. And he would sit there all fucking night watching the spot. And with somebody parking it, he'd go out there and flatten his fucking tires. It <laughs> got to the point where nobody would park on the fucking block because they know their tires would be fucking flat. What are you looking at the fucking thing for? I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, yeah, so it's... I sit out there sometimes and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to flatten this guy's tire today. Or I'm just thinking of getting cat shit and putting it on a door handle. <laughs> you know, at 49, I know one thing. If I do that, I'm going to walk around and I got something coming to me. Oh, yeah. And I never want something coming to me. That's the problem with fucking karma. So, Gisela, whatever, rest in peace, but dirty bitch, you knew you had it coming. You're out there slinging blow, getting your fucking little black pussy suck or Colombian pussy suck. They killed her in front of a daughter in law or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, fucking like two know. people rolled up on a motorcycle and shot her in the head. Yeah, fucking uh, New Jack City style, you know what I'm saying? That's nuts. I, I had a question. I was thinking, because I read that article and I was thinking about it the other day. Do you know of anybody who's like, has been a drug dealer or doing that stuff for their entire life and actually gets away with it and like doesn't go to jail or end up dead or are there people who can do that for like a lifetime or is they, that a lot of people do it for a lifetime but there's never you always pay somewhere okay you're always gonna pay somewhere somewhere you gotta pay for your fucking sense so you might rock and roll and make some money but you might have other heartaches that are associated with that and you know you know when it's coming Maya Lansky had made a bunch of money but he had a retarded son and his wife always blamed that Really? On the retarded, you know, what he had done. And I shouldn't say retarded. He was fucking a momo. Whatever. I don't fucking know. But uh, they, she always blamed it on that. You got it coming. Always remember that. The church of what's happening now. Let's play some fucking music. What are you going to move for today? Uh, you want to play more uh, Black Sabbath or do you want to play something else? I don't know. I'm in the mood for something exotic. What do you fucking think, Lee? Like, uh, hmm. Hmm. We haven't done any uh, real, we've done a little bit of rap, but not really. Or any country. 
country. That's Me? not fucking bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, country. you love country. What do you know about country? I love fucking country. I don't country. know shit about country. I like this, uh, what the, 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 the fucking chick and the guy, the lady out the bellum. I like those fucking two. They're savages. Don't forget, Mr. T's calling in today. My high school teacher's calling in about 20 minutes. Uh, Mr. T's a very interesting guy. I love this guy, and I've spoken to him. Uh, I keep in touch with him. He was my teacher from freshman year to senior year in high school. And pretty much after that, he kept me out of, uh, he kept me from fucking taking a swan dive, as he would call it, you know. Joey, I hear through the fucking ranks, you're thinking of taking a swan dive. It ain't worth it. So uh, I didn't see him from the time I graduated in 82. And uh, in 84, I seen him on a street corner. He pulled up next to me. And he goes, you're looking like fucking Mortovan, dead of warm <laughs> Dover. Look at you, you filthy fucking savage. Look at this bad motherfucker. So, uh... He said, you know, you got to get your life together. You can't keep hanging out on corners. And the next thing you fucking know, uh, I had to leave. I had to leave North Bergen. New Year's Eve, 1984. New and Year's Eve, Jesus 1984, Christ. because I fronted a half ounce of blow. So I figured I'd front the half ounce of blow, keep the pocket money, and start a new life. I called him about 6 in the morning. He picked me up and uh, took me to Creskill, New Jersey, about 15 miles away. And... Uh, he took me to a few AA meetings and he believed in me, you know, and I mm -hmm. got a job in the city and I got a job at a liquor store and I kept fucking doing my thing. So after two months one day, he goes, I got a call from the cops. Do me a favor. Don't come back till you pull up with a fucking Cadillac. That's and, fucking uh, intense. No. I went to Rascals one time and I called him. I go, I ain't got no Cadillac, but I'm getting on stage. Do you want to come? And we, and that was about 15 years ago. We've been tight. And whenever he sees me on TV, he calls me and he's my high school teacher. Wow. Mr. T, and uh, I love him to death, and this is the reason I do this shit, you know, to make people like that proud. They went on a limb for me, so I'm trying to go on a fucking limb for them, you know what I'm saying? Now, looking back into those times when you were, when those people would help you out, and you were still doing crime or still doing drugs, did you feel bad doing that, and you, or you just couldn't stop, or you just it didn't? Even... No, I didn't give a fuck. Why do I give a fuck? You're doing your thing, dog. When you do your thing, you commit, and you don't fucking look back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you got to pull out a fucking gun, and say, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, you, you're caught up in different things in your life. You know, I made mistakes like everybody fucking else. Some women suck 50 cocks. You know, I tried to roll the fact. What are you going to fucking do? <laughs> you know, it happens sometimes in your life. But I'm here to tell you I wasn't not happy about it now. I'm going to have a child. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't want the fucking kid to know. But what are you going to do? The kid's going to know, and you live with it, and you stick with your decisions, the things we do. When you ain't got a fucking gun. Lee, how about a little fucking Allison Chains this morning down in the hole direct from the from the murky waters of the underworld where there's H, there's fucking everything. You understand me? And if you find a live one, do it. But just go off of dirt just to get people in the fucking mood today. Because this show's about getting you up. It's 6 in the fucking morning. What do you think I'm doing up here? I'm here for my fucking health or what? When I was a kid and I get up, there'd be the news, the news, and Jack Wallane <laughs> doing fucking sit-ups in a bodysuit like Bruce Lee without the fucking stripe. Here, you got a bunch of shit. You motherfuckers got 800 channels, and then you got Mad Flavor. You got what, what Alice in Chains song do you want to play? Down in a motherfucking hole. Okay. Great fucking album, Dirt. One of my all-time favorites. I mean, uh, let me tell you something, man. I was down and out with music. After the 80s, I was like, fuck this shit. And when all that stuff came out of Seattle, I was never so fucking happy. I liked that shit so much. I met a girl moved to motherfucking Seattle. That's how much I liked it. Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. I mean, all that fucking shit. Pearl Jam. It was just a beautiful time to be up there. And I was... Uh, very fortunate. Too bad I was on probation the whole fucking time. What are you going to do? Lee, what are you looking yeah. for? A fucking crystal ball over there? You it's loading, man. Give me, give me four seconds. Loading? What do you got AT&T versus for? What are they fucking loading? <laughs> They're not fast enough. These man. motherfuckers, they charge you for fucking everything. It's going to be the speed of light, and then nothing fucking happens. They're the biggest fucking rip-offs without a gun. AT&T, oh, yeah. Sprint. I love them to death. I love my fucking Sprint phone. I don't like this is falling or something. No, no, I'm saying I'm running. Oh, who gives a fuck, Lee? You don't, don't do that, Lee, because you're throwing me off. Okay. When you move your head and you tell me, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you're in the middle of dropping fucking knowledge. What are you doing? Look who's coming. Cocksuckers here. Where are the rest of them, Terry Clark? He's the only one who wanted to come. What happened? He's the only one who wanted to come. Come here, Papa. There's Gray Gray. They're all fucking here. Who are you kidding? All my little cats are here, these cocksuckers. My pregnant wife is here. I got weed all over my shirt. What's happening, guys? Come on. You want to say hello, Skinny Finny, to me? My little man. 
Skinny Bomb Benny. Say hello, cocksucker. Say hello. That's right. Say hello. Say hello. Go ahead. Speak into the mic, cocksucker. All right. <laughs> that's my boy and shit. See? We got a third co-host. This is my old boy here. I got some fucking pet greens, catnip buds. This is the real fucking deal, people. If you got cats and you love your cats, don't fuck around. What, you know what I'm saying? Don't smoke the buds all. Look at that. What's up, they look like fucking medical marijuana buds. Like any kind of bud. Look at this shit. And your cat goes fucking banana. Look at Harry Warren. He's right here next to me. What's up, Harry? What's up, Harry? What's up, Harry? You know I love my fucking cats. I love animals. If you got a dog, if you got a fucking cat, go hug that cocksucker right now. Namaste, cocksuckers. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Go out there. <laughs> Out of those nuts, wash those fucking nuts, those balls. Lee, what's up with the fucking air? I'm over here sweating like a, like a, like a, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers don't want catnip? Fuck it. I smoke it myself. And this reefer brought to you today by NoHo CC. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Like Superman Bud. I got my fucking uh, vapor over here just in case there's an earthquake and I can't find my lighter. Mm -hmm. Like a doctor. A little something for Obama. Milt Rodney, put this in your fucking pipe, <laughs> cocksucker. Because that motherfucker is anti marijuana. Oh, yeah. So, for all you motherfucking Republicans that are voting for that fucking Herman Munster looking motherfucker, just remember, he goes into office. We're really going to get down here. There's going to be no reefer, no nothing. But I don't give a fuck. Look at this. I got the vapor pen. And worst case scenario, you know me, I'll smoke these fucking cat buds. I order these from fucking Amazon. Go to Amazon. Pet Greens Catnip Buds. I love this shit from my cat. They're getting used to it though now. See, they get the resistance like weed. Every once in a while. You're paying attention for the phone, this motherfucker might call. It's on whenever he's ready. Yeah, he might call in a couple minutes. So that's how lucky we are today. I still keep in touch with my high school teachers. Cock of suckers. We're going to have to get Barone to call. If anyone watched the documentary, Barone was on in the, the guy with the red shirt and the blue background. He's great. That's a good fucking idea. I'm going to have uh, my ex, the, the, the stripper call. I called her this morning. She ain't fucking answering. I wanted to see what her deal was. Wake that fucking freak up and talk about hand jobs and whatever the fuck she does. Who's this? Motherfuckers send an email this early about travel. They send you this fucking about travel.com. Who gives a fuck? If you keep sending me emails after a year and I don't get back to you, why are you sending me? What are you wasting your time? You think I'm going to change my fucking mind about your product? Now I got <laughs> Boston Market sending fucking emails. You get their emails? No, I don't Come out to Boston there? Market. Yeah, they, listen, man. Boston, when you're a fat fuck, Boston Market's got great turkey. <laughs> you go there, you get a little slice of fucking turkey with a little stuffing. You know, you get double sides of meat, you get extra protein, you put that trip to fucking norm in your system, you go home and take a nap, you smoke a fucking blunt. So it's not bad because you're not going to make a fucking turkey every week. Turkey's dry too much, though, man. I, I tend to stay away from it, like a turkey dinner. I'll have turkey sandwiches, but turkey's dry yeah, too Yeah, but much. the problem is because you're ordering a turkey dinner on a fucking Wednesday. By that, anything's fucking dry. Her asshole's fucking dry. <laughs> you got to eat the turkey dinner when it's fresh on a Sunday. Even a NoHo CC down the fucking corner. Not a NoHo CC, a NoHo diner, which you ordered the spaghetti and found out how oh. bad the fucking food was. They got a great turkey on Sunday. They slice it thin. The mashed potatoes blow. The fucking gravy looks like pimple juice. Like <laughs> whitehead pimple juice that hits the fucking mirror. It's thick. But uh, he's calling? No, not yet. What are you looking at me for? Like I'm on probation, cocksucker. Looking at you, Robert. I, I get yelled at when I look at the chat. I get yelled at when I look at you, man. Yeah, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're doing. You're confusing me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and everybody's everybody, everybody that you saw last night. Listen. I don't know how to break this down for you because people are going to get pissed off, but I don't give a fuck. And here it goes, all right? When I turned out that Democratic convention last night and I seen that Puerto Rican Mexican dude and his last <laughs> name is Castro, I almost shot myself. That was a fucking weak move putting up a fucking Castro. The last Castro that fucking talked to people took over a fucking island and shoved it up their fucking ass. And it's never going to. I hate Castro everything. Yeah. Castro convertibles. I hate the fucking. <laughs> I hate the old Castro. I hate them fucking all. So I got pissed off. But thank God my girl. And you know what? I'll tell you what. I always think this election was going to be won by the women on this one. Because they're fucking close. <clears throat> I thought Obama's wife was going to go up there and throw up heat. I love Mrs. Obama. So don't get me wrong. Oh, that fucking thing was brutal. She, that was, that, that fucking was speech terrible? was giving me an ear beat. Talking about her family and walking up the stairs and seeing her father. Who gives a fuck, all right? 
Let me know what your husband's going to do. I got to sit through this fucking thing. That's one of those cocaine ear beatings when you want the chick to suck your dick. <laughs> but you got to let her tell a story to get there. You know what I'm saying? She's oh. telling me about her father coming home and she'd be on the top of the stairs. Do I need this fucking aggravation in my life? Just lick my nuts and move on with your fucking long story. Yeah, no, I, I can't stand this time of year. I, I, I get yelled at all the time because I just don't vote. They're all liars. You got to go fucking vote. But they're all fucking lies. At least you see through it. I mean, you know, the big question is how much has your life changed the four fucking years? Guess what, Lee? Obama didn't change my life. Lisa, yeah, changed my life. And Joe <laughs> Rogan. So you follow what I'm saying to you? But you know what, man? We're not doing bad. The people we know aren't doing bad because we live here. You know, I get to travel. I'm really, really fortunate. I get to go to Pittsburgh where the sport bars don't fucking open unless there's a, uh, a Pittsburgh Pirate game and they're in town. If they're away, there's no business. You know, I go to Buffalo where it's half the, you know, it's half the fucking business. Uh, I go to Cleveland. I go to Cincinnati. I go to a lot of these cities where you look around and go, what the fuck? Even last time I went to Houston, it wasn't booming down there. There was a lot of strip malls that were fucking open and whatnot. So, you know, the country is not, uh, it's not, everything is not L.A. I, we, we get, you know, we see fucking Jews driving BMWs <laughs> and fucking Audis, those fucking filthy fucking hypocrites. With their fucking little half yarmulke. Wait till we make our fucking yarmulke line. Fuck you, pay me. That's the name of our yarmulke line, me and Lee. It's going to be a white yarmulke with fuck you, pay me on it like that. Just look at a motherfucker. Don't know what time it is. Fucking Jews driving Mercedes Benz. When you told me that one time, my feelings got hurt. I never really thought oh, yeah. about it that way. Those fucking momos. You go down to town with a fucking Honda. What's up, baby? No, it's, you got to pick up the phone. 818. He's not calling. He is, you got to call back at that number, brother. He, he's going to switch it on now. 7719. Yeah. All right, brother. We'll be here. All right. Stay black, Mike. That's my man, Freddie Boom Boom Terranova, my fucking mentor in life right there. That's how we do it. I've been running with Mr. T since 1979. Freshman year, I met him, and I ran out in the football field. I go, T, am I going to play? It was freshman year. And he goes, yeah, sit on the sidelines or something. So I was, I got, I don't know, cold feet, and I'm on the sidelines talking to these guys. And he's like, Diaz, Diaz. And I heard him, and I'm like, I'm not going to fucking play now. There's like four minutes left. I run over to him. And I go, yes, coach. And he goes, where the fuck you been? Sit there till your ass grows roots. Here there go. he is. Freddie T. Yo, how you doing? What's happening, baby? How's Mrs. T doing? Mrs. T's doing good. She's waiting to go in there and get the right medication. All right, you're beautiful. T, what I was telling what I was telling these savages not to cut you off was that uh, you know, you were my high school teacher. We became friends. Uh, nobody ever cut you. You had a great reputation because you always cracked a joke. And then in 85 and 84, you see me standing on the corner. You're pulled over. You're like, look at you. You look like death warmed over. You need a meeting. <laughs> you need a shower. And then uh, two weeks later, you put me in your home, and it started this great life of mine. And then the cops called you one day, and I called you, and you go, do me a favor. Don't come by until you pull up with a Cadillac. <laughs> and I was just telling them that you changed it all, brother. Yeah, well, that's good, man. You did good. You came a long way from uh, 1977 wearing uh, your sneakers to school. You were the first one not to tie your laces because you was a lazy bastard, man. <laughs> That's right, That's though. That's who you was. A skinny, lazy bastard. You must have weighed about 120 pounds. You yeah, know what I mean? Real Picking bananas thing. in your yard and all burying. But uh, you did good in school. You and Fernie, Basuto, Roger Holloway, all the dogs, man. All the dogs came in wearing red shoes, red vests, green hair, everything. I got his every day, though. Remember fucking Hahuba, the Hindu girl with the big feet? <laughs> oh, my God. And we would say Hahuba. And she had dirty nails and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you would say, you would say, uh, lighten up on the fucking Hahubas. <laughs> And then we, lighten up on it, you know then, what I mean? Then we had you in summer school. We had you in summer school. We would go oh, and you would teach history. God. And you would go, this ain't fucking oh. history. History is Woodstock, Alvin Lee. And you turn this on yeah, to I Alvin did, Lee. Till this day I listen to Alvin Lee, cuz you and I laugh every fucking time. 
every time. Alvin Lee, ten years, ten years after I'm coming home. What was I'm the coming home? Did you go see Santana and Alvin Lee or something at the Fillmore East? Yeah, yeah, in the Fillmore East, they played all night. They were throwing Black Beauties up in the air all over the joint, man. We were up for like a week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like funny, man. It was really good. They played all night, Santana. I'm staring. Yeah, they stunk in the beginning, and they played. Wow! Did they really stink in the beginning? Yeah, yeah. He was stopping every five minutes. He would stop the band, stop the band, stop. He did it for like an hour, and then they got rolling. We didn't nobody care. Everybody was wrecked. The whole turn was wrecked. And uh, then he started playing, and he said, "We play it all night." And we left out of there like seven in the morning, man. Over on the east side in the village. Yeah, it was like great, man. It was a great show. They even had like a warm up before he came on. They had a band called King Crimson who had the yeah. first synthesizer ever. You know? I mean, it was back in the day. T dropping fucking you know, you knowledge. Ah, oh, T, you were the best. You know, T, to go to school, nobody cut you for number one. And you made kids want to go to school because you'd always make a fucking comment. And, I, and I, since then, I've had the utmost respect for teachers because. In reality, you guys raised us. That's you know, it, man. This you got you got to know something. You got to learn something. If you come every day, you will learn something, and that's all that counts. As long as you learn something, man. You, you know, know what I learned? Mean? I learned fucking comedy, dog. Because you would, you would call attendance and get everybody up and goof on their t-shirt and look at your fucking head. Dude. Where'd you get those shoes worn? I remember the day oh, the Puerto sure. Rican kid, some Puerto Rican kid in front of the Spanish cafeteria, stepped on your shoes. And you looked at your oh. shit, and you and you said, "Get I those." Must have killed them, you said, "Get those hoop doop de doop <laughs> merengue shoes off my feet." Oh my God! I told my to a cha cha on his face. <laughs> I mean, but uh, yeah, I was a goof, man. A cafeteria duty was a goof. I used to cut that myself. I got caught. I got hollered at by the vice principal because I was with McGrath watching football films downstairs. I was supposed to be on duty in the cafeteria. I was with McGrath. I wonder if he's still smoking camels, man. Well, when we used to call him Camel really Breath because he used to smoke the Camel George. Reds and his fucking... Sm George. Uh, George the Camel <laughs> McGrath. His, uh... His uh, his beard, his uh, mustache was orange. Remember Mr. T from the fucking camera? He was orange, man. He it had orange. He was ugly bastard, man. Yeah, he was ugly. Let me tell big you. fucking Irish dude. I wonder why. But he used yeah. to be in charge he, of driver yeah. ed. And he'd drive us up to Chance Dragon Inn to get steak on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking cool That's was him, that? Man. George the Camel oh, McGrath, man. man. He used to have his fingers were fucking orange. Right, T? Yeah, his fingers, yeah, his smoking. mustache... All the time. We used to call him uh, George okay. McGrath. We used to sing him that Def Leppard song. Yeah. He'd lose his fucking mind. Good guy, though. Him and Mr. Oh, Zampella. Oh. Randy fucking Shave. Oh, yeah. I bumped into yeah, uh, yeah, Tommy yeah. Heinsohn in Atlanta. Wow. And I said to him, I was the yeah. disciple of Randy Shave. And he just looked at me and shook his fucking head. I hear you. <laughs> I hear that, man. T, I, I was talking. I now. haven't started even telling these motherfuckers Rago stories yet. Because I don't think they're oh ready yet. God. I got I'm, I'm looking at a picture of Rango right now, all muscle building up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is before he yeah. passed in '99. This was we were always me and Rango were his fucking oh. bodyguards. We didn't give I a know. fuck. And That's I talked to Joey right, Falada. Man. I talked to Joey Falada Monday. He called. He's been listening to the church of what's wow. happening now. So, yeah, me uh, and his father were friends. Me and Joey's father were friends, man. Yeah, he went to Back Vietnam. That's day. right. Yeah, he played for Memorial, when we, and I played for North Bergen, and we used to hang out together at night over in West New York. But uh, Rago was the best, man. He, when he was a freshman, he broke his leg, and I, boy, I went to the hospital, and I stayed with him in the hospital until his mother got there. That was like, the, he never forgot. He never forgot. Nah, T, we no never fucking... What. Hey, T, 30 years later, I'm still on the fucking phone with you out of respect, man. Yeah, how about that? How about that? So I love you with all my heart, and I'm happy you called in. You made my fucking week here. Show these motherfuckers Thanks, what's really man. cracking in the Thanks. church of what's happening now, T. Okay, man. Hey, we'll talk well, method. Hey, give cool, them, huh? T, give them a method and method to do Hall and Company. That's it. Method and do Hall and Company. One time, we're selling them on a corner here from Method and do Hall and Company. That's the label of your new album, man. Send it in. Hey T, what was what happened right, to time? T what happened to time you got surrounded in West New York at the pool hall by Puerto Ricans? You said <laughs> one dime, one phone call, twenty Puerto Ricans. That's it, 
that's it, man. That's what I said. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. That was like the fucking scariest time of my life over there. But that was good. We got out of there. That's it. One dime, one phone call. 10,000 Hoyas. You know what I mean? <laughs> T, I love you. I mean, I'll call you during okay, the week. God bless you, you always and the boys and Mrs. T. Send them all my love, man. Will, will do, man. And Thanks. stay black, okay. T. That's the most important fucking thing. You know that. Will do. Okay. <laughs> all right, brother. <laughs> That's as good as it gets for me, guys. That's uh, Freddie Terranova, my fucking teacher. And uh, he's on my wall. And uh, I'm happy he fucking called today. So musically, where's the fucking musica here? What do you want to play, You're man? You're killing me. A little fucking uh, mama. Papa was a Rolling Stones by the Temptations. Let's put some fucking soul into their life before I send them out into the fucking world. All right. So that was pretty crazy, man. It's uh, it's something that I've learned hanging out with you for a while. What's that? that? Your friends and family and just seeing you right now, they're really important to you, man. Ah, uh, this is my life, man. I get emotional. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, all the times you went into school and, and he'd be there. You didn't want to fucking be in school, you know? And you'd go and he'd be there and fucking just make you laugh. The only reason when you went was because... Uh, you knew you didn't want to miss what Mr. T had to fucking say. You never wanted to miss what he had to say. You didn't want to miss one of his jokes. And, uh, you know, till this day, man, whenever I'm having a bad week or whatever, I'll give him a call and just, just two minutes on the fucking phone with him refuels me, you know? It fucking really does refuel me. So uh, that that's basically it, man. Church of what's happening now is about getting you out there in a fucking good mood. Go out there, sling some dick. <laughs> You know, what's your, what did I write yesterday? I write shit and I forget. Oh, you said if if, uh, if you're not going to eat her pussy, why turn her over? Yeah, if you're not going to eat her ass, <laughs> why turn her over? That's the fucking motto there. Go out there, wash your fucking balls. Listen, man, we all have bad days. Who gives a fuck? I've been waking up with no fucking dough and having to go to a diner and front breakfast. Like, eat it and then make Front breakfast? Front breakfast. Say, listen, I don't have money to pay. I forgot my wallet. Come back tomorrow. You know, and then start your day. Once you have nourishment, you can go out there and fucking rob. So, or whatever the fuck it is that you do. Rob, sell <laughs> stock, you know, edit fucking uh, film, whatever the fuck you do, you know. So that's what we do here is just get you stronger so you can get out there and fucking sling dick. You understand me? Because we all going to walk into the fucking mouth of the tiger today. We all fucking start at minus. And it's all about just getting on your fucking horse and going out there. Fuck these motherfuckers. They can't stop you, bro. I bumped into my main man, Brody Stevens, the other night. And we're at the Laugh Factory. Did I tell you about this? No. And I gave him a big hug because I love Brody Stevens with all my heart. And I'm proud of him for his show on HBO Go. And he looked at me at one point. He got to go, you know, I'm really proud of you. And we're talking. And he looked at me. He knows what school of thought I'm from. He knows I'm an old school fucking Jew from fucking long time ago. G Kundo style. Jew mixed with... I'm, listen, <laughs> I'm a Jew that went to Catholic school. That's when the motherfucker shows up with two guns. It don't get better than that. I got I got the best of all education. I threw Santeria on top of that. I mixed it with some Buddhism. What I got together is better than fucking Jeet Kune Do. So uh, I look at Brody, and, you know, Brody's gone through a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah. He looks at me with his fucking little piercing Jew eyes, <laughs> and he goes, don't stop, keep going, right? And I go, dog, I'm fat and I'm ugly. But I got a big dick and a lot of personality. They ain't stopping me. You know what I'm saying? They ain't stopping us. As long as you got a big dick and a lot of personality, they ain't going to fucking stop you. Whether you have a big dick or not, we all got a big dick. It's how you walk on the street. Yeah. It's how you perceive yourself. Go out there. You got the 10-foot fucking dick when you walk down the street. You don't see him. Nobody will fuck with you. Go out there, people. Today's your fucking lucky day, cocksucker. Little temptations. I got to go get something to drink real quick. What do you got for me? Papa Rose Rolling Stone. Drop it on these motherfuckers. I'll be right back. I'm coming back. Listen to this shit. You know, this is as good as it gets in my fucking eyes. I'm going to hit you with rock music, disco music, fucking knowledge, and now I'm going to hit you with the core. These are fucking five starving brothers, wherever the fuck they were from, Detroit, Michigan. The, they were from all over the South. I love the fucking Tations. This shit. I'll be right back. Play it up loud for me. You want some?
Girl. Gray this Gray. Is, this is Gray Gray. Are you my Gray Gray? Huh? This is my little girl. This is the last one I brought up. She was the, uh, I told you guys, she was the owner's next door. And she would come by every night and call for me. She's my little sweet angel. These dogs, these fucking cats, man, when you wake up in the morning, I don't give a fuck what mood you make up in. They always put you in a better mood. Just this, just hugging them, playing with her nose, getting her gets, because she gets pissed off. She don't like all this love. She's a little dirty bitch. <laughs> but when you don't give her love, then she gets pissed, right? <coughs> all right, get out of here. Beat it. Little cocksucker. What else, dog? Did you play it already? Yeah. It ended? No, it didn't end, but you were talking. So you turned it off? It, it's paused. It's, it, it's still I got to teach you how to fucking play music. You're slipping with the music. Put the fucking music on, cocksucker. You hook him up. It's like you gave him a hand job. Right there, we're going to come. You fucking got your hands off that cock and you let him go. I told you he doesn't, You're man. killing him. I'm going to eat a little Weight Watchers breakfast this morning. I got my little Weight Watchers power booklet right here. So you get 50 points and you write down all the fucking points, you know. So I used to eat like three eggs, a half a pack of fucking bacon, a loaf of fucking white bread and a tub of fucking hotel bar butter. Now I eat one egg, one piece of toast, a little bit of butter, and then three or four pieces of center cut Oscar Mayer fucking bacon. All total, two for the egg, two for the piece of bread, one for the butter, which is five, about three for the fucking bacon. Eight point breakfast. It ain't bad. Mike Dolce is a little pissed off at me because I don't like the bowls and shit, but I don't like no vegetables in the fucking morning. I like my vegetables later on. I'll fucking smoke them. What else is going on, cocksucker? You're sitting there. You don't give me no music. You lower it on these fucking people. Look, kick that shit. on you to tell me the truth what oh shit oh shit here we go motherfuckers uh, uh, uh. little fucking green red tea who you thinking you're fucking dealing with cocksuckers <laughs> and we got no sponsors but Lee tell them we're looking for fucking national sponsors I don't know why Castle get your shit together you motherfuckers they get me on Twitter saying that they want to fucking sponsor me. They want to hang out. And then I hit them back and they're thinking about it. They got to go talk to eight white dudes with suits on. It's fucking White Castle, all right? One minute you're eating a burger, the next minute you're shitting blood. We're trying <laughs> to get fucking people to White Castle. White Castle, I grew up on fucking White Castle. You understand me? One of the best establishments. But it's not for the fucking food. It's for the ambiance and entertainment. Where else are you going to get a burger? Three burgers for a dollar and see some Puerto Rican getting stabbed. Ah! Papa was a Rolling Stone. Cut that shit, Lee. Lee Syed here, the fucking mastermind of this motherfucking organization. <laughs> don't blame me, man. The podcast is getting downloaded on iTunes, so don't hit me no more with no fucking questions. It'll be on iTunes, and it's a good podcast. The only problem with it, you know what I love? I love, would you kill the fucking music? Now it Kill the fucking music here. Okay, you you know, now we're going to talk here about now some shit. I love these, like, like, they're bringing this show, Arrested Development, back, right? Yeah. Now, why'd they cancel the show? It's supposed to be the funniest. Oh, my God. It's the funniest thing. It's intelligent comedy. Listen, do me a favor, all you intelligent comics. Go fuck your fucking mother up the ass with that <laughs> shit. Intelligent comedy. If it was so fucking intelligent, why didn't it stick around? Now it's taking another two years to put the fucking show on the air. Oh, we got Ron Howard. This guy's making a comeback. Why don't you suck my dick, you fucking sheepy comedy fucking fans? If it's not Arrested Development, it's fucking Chuck. It's fucking Conan. You motherfuckers, the show goes to get canceled. Next thing you know, you're jumping up and down on Burbank. Save Coco. The motherfucker's still nobody watching that fucking show. I like Conan O'Brien. Chuck, I never watched the fucking show. But again, the Momos came out. Uh, we like Chuck. The fucking show. I watched it one time. I almost shot myself in the fucking head from boredom. <laughs> and this Arrested Development, if it was so fucking funny, where the fuck is it? What the fuck is wrong with you people? You always want to be different. Than oh, because it's intelligent comedy. You put your little fucking fake glasses on and drink a little fucking snippet of wine or tea. Why don't you suck my dick? 
and get on board and get on the real motherfucking world and stop being a fucking fake. That's where the fucking country is going to change. Obama and Romney and none of these motherfuckers are going to help you. We don't help your fucking self. So all you motherfuckers with your iPhone and your iPad, the answer is I. You know what you need to fucking do. Walking around with your fucking fake fucking glasses on. Talking about intelligent. Oh, Arrested Development's making a fucking Ron Howard. Ron Howard's a great director. I've never seen Ron Howard on stage fucking killing for ten fucking minutes, all right? For you, all you motherfuckers. Well, he's a great comedic actor. You know what the difference is between a comedic actor and what I do? Cut. That's the fucking difference. I take a cut and they can do it again. And you motherfuckers are at home. Oh, my God. Did you see him the other night? Fuck you. What stand-up comics do, we go out there and there ain't no fucking director, there ain't no producer, it's just us. There ain't no cut, there ain't no do-overs. You go out there and you fucking do it. So get your shit together on your judgment, Arrested Development, you fucking momos. Yeah, it's been weird, because they, they canceled it after three seasons, and they've been talking for years oh, about... Go bringing... fuck you, intelligent yeah. comedy. Go fuck your mother, intelligent comedy. Intelligence is what you make of it. What good is it if you're fucking intelligent, but you're waiting online at Starbucks in the morning with a fucking iPhone like a momo for a cup of coffee? It's a fucking cup of coffee. They got them at 7-Eleven, which is even probably a lot better. You ever drink Brazilian Bold? No, man. It's like doing meth in fucking Tennessee, okay? <laughs> you will be up for two fucking days drinking Brazilian fucking Bold. You think I'm kidding you? Go to 7-Eleven and get a cup of coffee for a fucking dollar. Go smell a Hindu. Start your day off on the right fuck. Go see some sandals or some shit. I made the mistake of going to Starbucks after the last podcast, and there were three guys behind there. Only one guy was making the drinks, and I just waited in line for 15 minutes for an iced tea. And I just, I, I yeah. went ha- halfway through. I was like, I already made the decision. The and there you are standing like a fucking momo, like a sheep, like what you, what your mother ma- raised you not to fucking be. Yep. First thing your mom said to you, when you before you left was, if three people jump off a cliff, are you going to fucking jump off a cliff? I want half of America to think about that shit every fucking morning. Are you going to fucking jump off a cliff? Are you going to put your fucking pants on with the two buttons in the back and you're a guy and you tap out shirt and look like every other fucking momo? Or are you going to have your own fucking identity, your own set of balls? That's why I write shit about balls every morning. Mm -hmm. Because women and men have fucking balls. Turn that air on. It's fucking sweating. I'm sweating up a fucking storm in here. I'm wearing white. You know, women, when I write those things, I'm not writing them just for guys. We all have fucking balls, Lee. But they do you no good if you're not doing nothing with them. Yeah. Can I get up in the morning? It's fucking early. I'm going to have my little Weight Watchers breakfast. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to write it down in my book. Look at look at, look at Gray. Shit in the cap box right in front of me. Gray, get your shit together over here. Look at her. <laughs> look at her. Taking her shit right here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tie her up and shit in front of her fucking <laughs> face. That old lady never walked back down this block again. Oh, she couldn't. That was a fucking hilarious story. I laughed just thinking about just it. Just thinking about it. I told my wife the story she couldn't fucking believe. I fought it outside. Gave her, what, a four-minute, four-second fucking walk? before 30 she seconds. Could, 30, 30 seconds yeah. before she walked there. And the fart just elevated. It was like, it was like David Copperfield. <laughs> it just stayed right there. <laughs> you got to love fart. I love it. I love it. I'm for that's Oh, well, Joey, that's not intelligent comedy. Where's Bill Maher? And I love Bill Maher. I, don't get, I love fucking Bill Maher. I watch the show. Bill Maher put me on Politically Incorrect one time as a Were monster. You really? Yeah, me and Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, he's funny, man. Yeah, Sebastian's real fucking funny. This is when Politically Incorrect was still on. They had Mob Week. Oh, okay. And they were looking for promos. So me and Sebastian went down there and we got booked. I remember taking Sebastian behind him and going, let's walk in there and fuck these motherfuckers up. I haven't heard from him in a while. He did that, he that, did that special That fucking Showtime special was hilarious. Oh, hilarious. he did Showtime one. I saw his Comedy Central one right, this, where he did the jeans and he was wading through the jeans. And right, and Ross. No, yeah, then, oh, then he, yeah. did a, uh, he did one that got released. Uh, Sebastian's a great kid representing fucking Chicago. For all you motherfuckers that don't know, next week, September 14th, uh, me and Ari are going on presale in Chicago, the House of Blues. House of Blues, that's a great show. In Chicago, so it's a great gig. Please come out and support. It's fucking Chicago. Bring a hot beef sandwich. I love it. You ever have a hot beef Italian sandwich? No, man. I was just gonna ask you. And I have. I haven't been to Chicago, but it's. It seems like a place that I would like. I, being from Boston, I would love. Is Chicago awesome? I'm not being from Boston. Being a fucking Jew. All right, let's get to the fucking. <laughs> being a good American fucking Jew. Yeah, you need to be the fucking Chicago. It's a great city. You know. uh... My love for Chicago is the fucking... I love everything. South side, fucking north side, hole in the wall, an Italian place in the north side. I like downtown, but my heart's in the south. You know me, I'm a dirty fuck. Yeah. I believe I belong in Tinley Park down there with fucking Riddles and all those comedy clubs down there. I love it. You know, if you... Uh, Bernie Mac, all those guys are from there, and you hear some fucking great comedy stories, man. They, if you're a comedian... And you love that shit. And you ever see Cheryl Underwood? Pull her aside. Cheryl's on that show, a morning show. Okay. But uh, she was telling me some fucking Chicago stories when they'd all get in the car 
for 50 bucks and shit like that. So, uh, Chicago's my heart, man. I, every time I go, oh my God, a nice. When I used to go to Riddles, there was a restaurant close by, an Italian restaurant. I would call them, they would deliver a hot beef sandwich, and in the sandwich, they'd make a pipe for me out of aluminum foil, and they'd put a little button there for me. Are you because serious? he had to hold me over until the fucking club started. That's how cool the fucking guy was. So, I'm a big Chicago guy. I'm also, next week, I'm going to Minneapolis to Rick Bronson's House of Comedy. I'll be at, uh, at there from the 13th through the 16th. I'm going to have a great time. I don't know what the fucking number is, but go to Rick Bronson's, the website. I'm doing Thursday show. I'm doing Friday and Saturday. The week after that, I'm going to Madison, Wisconsin. Fucking great town. I'm going to go up there and sling some fucking dick and shoot some fucking uh, gallons of fucking milky milk. <laughs> <laughs> and the Rick Bronson's, if you go to houseofcomedy.net, you can get the tickets. Okay. And then uh, we got... Uh, Milwaukee and Madison, and they're on my site. They're brown paper tickets. I will repost them on Twitter today. Then I go to the fucking one of the baddest cities in the country. And I, I'm looking forward also to going to Baltimore because that's the wire, bitch. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? That's the motherfucking wire, bitches. I haven't been to Baltimore in about 15 years. Oh, so you probably haven't been to Camden Yard. That's a great that's I've a been great to Cam- stadium. Oh, don't fucking, don't get me. That's a great fucking stadium. And man. they're in first place now. Fucking Baltimore. The Yankees are falling. The Red Sox are falling. Baltimore's in first. Did you place. give Leah a piece? You didn't ask me. To give I didn't fucking know. That's <laughs> a well, Weight Watcher breakfast right the there. Uh, Say hello <laughs> to the people at home, honey. Show them the belly. Let me rub the I'm belly. Not gonna do it. All right, fuck <laughs> it. that's my little girl, Sophia. Look at my wife with the mini skirt. You want a piece of bacon, Lee? Sure. To hold you over. There you go, buddy. So now it even gets it low. So this is it, man. This is it, Mo. A fucking piece of egg. one egg yolk. I don't like egg whites. All right. Fuck you oh, guys. I, know. Oh, I fucking hate egg whites with all my heart. I'm gonna egg. why suck a dick and drink the pre cup. You know what I'm saying? That's and we were talking earlier. That's the thing. I, I can't stand people who eat healthy and they're like, oh, salmon is great and boiled, boiled uh, broccoli. Like you can eat healthy, but it doesn't have to be disgusting. There still can be good tasting food. Like, That's you know why I like Weight Watchers. It's your own fucking food. Yeah. So, so you can eat the two eggs and what will you have for lunch on it? Like. Not on a normal day. I guess I had a nice chicken salad. This is my fucking soda. No, I see a soda. Today, I don't know. I have a bunch of fruit in a little while. Mm-hmm. And for lunch today, maybe. I don't know. I Maybe get sushi today. Sushi's great, but then it's... I mean, it's a standard joke, but you really... You get hungry like an hour later, which is tough. I love sushi, but it's... Anything like that, it's all the rice or whatever. I don't know what it is, but it gets you uh, it gets you really hungry later. But I saw something the other night, which I don't know if you'd like, because it's all in Japanese with subtitles. It's a documentary called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. It's about this, like, 90-year-old sushi chef in Japan who's been, who got kicked out of his house at the age of nine and has been apprenticing in, like, the baddest sushi chef in Japan. He's, like, he has, he has like, the highest-rated sushi restaurant in the... That's what you're watching, Lee. Instead of going to the YMCA and doing jumping jacks, you <laughs> fuck about a sushi chef. That's why I love you, because you understand. Was he fat? No, he was skinny. I fucked up. I don't like skinny chefs. I don't trust him. Let me bring this back. Put on some music, Lee, for these people. Hit him with some Black Sabbath, Snow Blind. Okay. A little song about cocaine, and we'll wrap this motherfucker up today. For everyone else, Gerald's Dreams of Shusi is a really good documentary. Oh shit! This is a live version. There's no snow blind live. This motherfucker always messes up the lyrics like. Oh really? This one might be good. Feeling happy in my brain. What? Icicles within my veins. Cocaine. That shit used to drive me crazy. I'd go home and whip out a grandma blow and do it to this shit. I even lie in a fucking cemetery some afternoons under the sun. I swear to God, when I was like a sophomore, I'd go to a cemetery with my boys. 
Diddy can tell. We take like a half gram, do a couple bumps, and listen to this with a ghetto blast. How retarded were we? Jesus Christ. It's weird seeing him because this is the videos of him live, and it's he's he looks young. This is bad. Listen to this shit. This is unfucking real. Fuck yeah, Lee, we're having a good time. I'm happy people coming in, you know, stick'em.com. Let's give them a shout out for letting us on there, smoking dope, cursing, talking about Obama's wife's asshole, you know the thing. <laughs> no, and it's been unbelievable the amount of, of love we've gotten on Twitter, and I've, I've been getting emails. Oh, and speaking of emails, please send us emails at uh, church of what's happening now pod at gmail.com. We already answered an email, we'll answer as many as we can. Any questions you want to ask Joey? Joey, uh, Joey's really good at breaking things down, and it's uh, it, it's we love <coughs> questions. Uh, we're still looking for intro songs, and I've gotten a bunch of great ones already. But what we're looking for is like a rock one with maybe Joey saying "Church of What's Happening Now," or we could re- record it here. But just you know what kind of music Joey I got likes? A fucking studio, yeah, I can record it somewhere. We no, can yeah, put it somewhere. we could do it right here. That's yeah, right. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with, Joey? But I, this bitches. But you know, but like this Black Sabbath is the stuff he likes. And, and and just make it make it as rock as possible. It, it's the church of what's happening now. We want to wake people up with this song. This is it. You're going out into the fucking world. I'm I'm like your mother right now. I'm your mother. I'm your daddy. I'm the nigga in the fucking alley. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm with you all fucking day, dog. Fuck all this shit. You're not alone no more. And I walk the fucking steps. You know what I'm saying? I'm still walking them every day. That's why I love walking them. But you cock suckers. Maybe I'm going to put, uh, we might do Burt Kreischer on Beating the Beast today. Oh, that's cool. I saw Felicia last night. Felicia's a really great woman, and she's a really beautiful girl. Honest to God, I'm really lucky to have that crazy bitch in my life. Yeah, she's... She, she's a fucking uh, an animal. She really is a savage. I didn't know until about three fucking months ago how lucky I was to have her around. So keep listening to Beating the Beast also. We're fucking doing it all. We're covering, we got interviews, so we might put Bird on today. Because we had a fucking uh, a guest fighter going to come on, but he couldn't fly out. He couldn't make his fucking flight. So. Oh, that's tough. Bert's so. a great guy, though. Bert's good on podcasts. Bert, listen, man. These podcasts, I, I listen to a lot of them, and I see which guys I have not struggling with them because they can't be honest. Mm-hmm. They think this is fucking radio. The reason why we do this is because it ain't fucking radio. So why are you treating it like fucking radio? Yeah. You know, why the fuck are you treating it like radio if it's not radio? Get on there and tell these fucking people the truth. Tell them what's in your fucking heart. These people want to go on there, hi, oh, and be fucking radio. This ain't radio. You ain't selling shit. Tell these motherfuckers what's crack I like it. That's yeah. why I had T on this morning. I got really emotional when I talked to T. You have no yeah. idea where my heart and my head was. That guy kept me fucking alive. That guy kept myself, Fernie Basasuda. That's funny because Timmy Holloway, I talked to Timmy Holloway yesterday, and he asked me about Fernie Basasuda. Fernie Basasuda and I were uh, brothers. Uh, Rago, Clint Conti, Lebrano, uh, Roger Holloway. These fucking guys are my brothers. And, and, uh, the Fernie thing is really sad. I was there with Fernie when it started. He got hooked on gambling. Oh, he was the one who bet on the uh, bet, bet on the Super Bowl, right? He bet on the one? Super Bowl. He was up fucking twenty. He ended up losing fucking sixty right out of high school, nineteen eighty three. The sixty thousand. Sixty thousand from being up twenty thousand to being down sixty. What a fucking change! And he had to get three jobs, and it never. Uh, he never recovered from it, you know, and he fucking uh, turned into a junkie, they said, whatever. But he's cooking somewhere in Hoboken. I heard he's a great chef, and he hits me up on my life from time to time. Who's on fucking my life? They want to charge you like $80 to join my life. Go I think that's a dick. scam, man. Yeah, I think it's a scam. They always say Fernie Basasudo is looking for you on, my, on whatever the fuck it is, but I think it's bullshit. But whatever. I, uh, T raised a bunch of us, you know, myself, Darren Rago, uh, we were there. Like, every day we go to school looking for tea because God forbid you missed what the guy had to say. God forbid you've seen somebody in third period and they're like, dog, you should have heard what T said this morning. Because you had different periods that went in there. Mm-hmm. And he took care of me in 85. And dog, it's fucking 2012. I still talk to the guy once a week. He's in Sarasota. So. They don't have that much now. And there's, it's, it's really something special when you get a teacher. Because like you've said before, when you're a kid, they spend like 80% of the time and with you. fucking percent of the time with you, you know? And, and now, since all these budget cuts and shit, you get to the low end of the totem pole. People that molest kids. Listen, when I went to school, I never heard of fucking teachers, a male teacher assaulting a female or nothing like that. Yeah, like I said the other day, there was a female teacher that was sucking wrestlers' dicks. That's a complete different situation. <laughs> she likes sweaty balls and all that <laughs> shit. She likes smelly... 
sweaty balls. But I'm talking about, you know, people molesting kids. That, that, that didn't happen in my fucking society. They no. would fucking kill you. That's not accepted. That's not even something to think about. You know, the shit that goes on now. So you, you have a certain trust in a fucking teacher. How's he going to be following your dick? And don't get me wrong. You know, by the time we got out of high school, we were partying with these motherfuckers. I mean, he was talking about That's George crazy. McGrath, the camel breath. You know, George McGrath, camel breath, uh, sold blow for a, a, a guy, helped him out, that they had to make deliveries. And you couldn't, you know, you're white. You can't have a fucking Colombian kid coming over here, so he'd be the white guy. He delivered to white people for this guy. You know, he'd have parties and shit. As a teacher delivering coke, coke at night to make a to make a fucking living, you know. I mean, this is this was that area. This is 1980 in Hudson County, fucking New Jersey. This is the second, you know, the coke comes in, goes into Miami, and from Miami we go to Hudson fucking County. It's Cuba, fuckingville, you know. Yeah, and that so, couldn't happen now with Facebook, and so that would get out in two seconds. Well, it wasn't that he wasn't selling it to kids. He was doing it outside in New York City. So the guy he was working for was in New York City. Okay. So he would have to go to New York. You know, a white guy's having a, a, a charity. You know, you know those people. They want to give 50000 <laughs> but they want everybody in the world to know. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> so they call somebody in McGrath would fucking come bring a fucking package. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It wasn't like some guy at a bar. No, he was delivering it to white people, people, Republicans, you know, people who got to live in the fucking Upper West Side, Upper East Side, you know. And uh, he got into selling it for a while afterward. He Because what happened was, we robbed, the, the, the story goes like this, we robbed a Coke dealer two weeks after the guy, he was the guy that beat us for the Ozzy Osbourne tickets. Okay. When I went over there, he goes, no, the Coke is really 120 a gram. I'm like, you've been charging us 60 the whole fucking time, his name is Mike. And I went in there, we robbed him for a half ounce of fucking blow, and uh, that Sunday we had Fernie in the car, it was summer school, you, if you had three absences, they would throw you out of summer school. Wow. So fucking Fernie... Had two or three, two had two absences. We were up all night doing blow, so we had to go to T's house and tell T if he could cover for him in summer school. This is the kind. This is how we had it. And I remember we knocked on his door at seven in the morning. T's like, uh, his wife comes. She's like, oh my god, Coco, Freddie, how good to see you. And she's like, I'll get Freddie. And all of a sudden he comes over. He's like, look at these fucking guys. <laughs> so uh, he get, he was like, go outside and wait for us, you know. So it's me, Freddie, and this kid Conti sitting in the fucking car. And all of a sudden, uh, downstairs from T, there was a teacher named Jerry Composto, a real Greek geeky motherfucker, good good guy. And he would drive for, uh, Freddy to school. And Mr. T came down the stairs, and he's like, what's going on here? And we showed him the half ounce of fucking blowing a tin. And he went crazy. He's like, uh, he was telling the teacher, two minutes. And finally, when we showed him the tin, he was like, Composto, leave without me. And he drove with us. And I thought it was him. I was going to bring it up, him. but I was that like, was we, we should no, bring we weren't going to bring it up. And, uh, and I, and I gave McGram a blow. And I, a week later, I had to go collect the money. And, I went, and he goes, go to George McGrath. And when I went to George, George goes, of course he did. Of course. He snorts and I pay, you know. So uh, he goes, you thought that was good shit you gave me? And I go, yeah. And he, he whoops out a fucking bag out of his freezer. It had to be two fucking kilos. And he goes, try this. So for weeks, I was fronting from Mr. McGrath. Fronting, going over and going, Mr. Wow. McGrath, give me an eight ball. Joey, you owe me $2,000. When is this going to end? You know, when is it? You know, I would go put it on the arm, and he'd go, my arms are heavy. <laughs> my arms are fucking heavy, Coco. I don't like putting on glasses. I feel like that fucking dude from uh, whatever. But uh, uh, it was funny because I always uh, was friends with McGrath after that, and I was friends with T and stuff. And the other day when we had Luby on, Luby was talking about robbing Hess, a gas station. We robbed the Hess one time. And the funny thing about the Hess was that we robbed something and it was a big bag. We, we looked at each other and we're like, we're rich. We get in the fucking car, we open it up, and it's filled with singles. Oh, Jesus Christ. It looked like $8 million, but it was all singles. And I remember getting 300 singles together for George McGrath. I call him and going at 3 in the morning, Mr. McGrath, we're going down the shore. Front me, uh, give me an ape on him going, no, 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 no. You owe too much already, Coco. And I go, I got cash. And he goes, I'll see you on the corner in three minutes. I swear <laughs> to God, that's how the conversation was. And I met him at this bag, $300, looked like one of those bags with cartoons that have the money sign on them. Unbelievable. It was this fucking big. And he looked at it, he was like, thank God, you pay me the money you owe me. About an hour later, I call him, I go, everything all right? He goes, 300 fucking singles. 300 fucking singles. What am I going to do with this shit, you fucking moron? And that was... McGrath is on fucking Facebook. He won't friend me. <laughs> he won't be my friend. He won't be... That, we, that's a shirt for you. He won't be my friend on Facebook. <laughs> 
So what do you got on your agenda today, Lee? What are you going to do today? It's a beautiful Wednesday day. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to try to work out before I go to work, man. That's all I can do. All right, so I'll be around. So maybe we'll work out together. I'll be here. Constantly. Absolutely. I'm going to go to the Y again today. I got to do something. I don't have much on the books today. But I'm happy you came over. I'm happy fucking Mr. T called. I'm happy we got to do our fourth fucking podcast. It'll be up later this week. Yeah, it'll be up by tomorrow. It's, it's amazing talking to the people you talk to. And I've, you, we all heard stories about them, but it's hearing him on the phone. He wasn't what I thought he was going to sound like. I can just I can just imagine him in Sarasota, Florida right now. just Walking around with white socks on and long skinny legs telling people, go on with your bad self. Yeah, and what did he, what did he say at the end? Like the Oyes or whatever? Oh, the fucking Oyes. Because that's how <laughs> Latinos, Oye, Oye, como esta? They always say Oye. So he, he came from a different society. He's like, the fucking Oyes. <laughs> 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 it's really amazing. It shows where you got your comedy from. Every every little person we talk to, it's like a little piece of Joey Diaz. Nah, he's he was my one of my biggest fucking mentors. And that's it, brother. When are we coming back? We'll be doing another podcast. Do you want to do one uh, Monday or would you want to do one before? Let's do one fucking Monday. Perfect. Or maybe we'll go. We'll do one before church again. We don't know. Okay. On a Sunday, because last Sunday was fucked up. We'll have to take him to the hoop. Lee, thank you very much for helping me and all that you've done for me. I want to thank everybody who watched. I want to thank everybody who fucking downloaded this motherfucker. Also, also, we did not discuss it. It is the season premiere of NFL football this weekend. But I have no lines. I can't. I have to watch a few games, and then we'll make you guys some money. Because I'm going to make you money for fucking watching the show. Trust me when I'm telling you. Lee, tell him. Yeah, no, it, it's... Tell him. It's Joe, fu- Joe I'll would, take you to the hoop. I would call, I've been working with Joey for about <coughs> a year, and he would call me every Sunday morning. Joey calls me about every day just to check in. And he would call me... On Sunday morning, and say, "What are you looking at?" And I, I'd always want the Patriots, and he would break down. He's like, "Who's playing today? Who's playing today?" He'd break like the Browns. He'd break down every game, and he, he would. It would be like the Browns and Cincinnati, which no one wants to watch. But he, but he said, "That's where you put your money." That's where you put your money. Why, why bet the games every other fucking Momo's watching? Be fucking unique. Be yourself, bro. That's all that fucking matters. Don't forget Minnesota next week, Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee, and Madison. And then we got fucking Baltimore. Beside that, go to joeycocodias.net. We got Don't Eat uh, Blue Cheese shirts. We got Stay Black shirts. JR sending them to Australia, to England. He don't give a fuck. JR's my little black brother up there in fucking Rochester, New York. JR Productions, he'll be tweeting. He's a fucking savage. Lee, I love you, cocksucker. Have a great week. I want to hear about you working out and your diet. When you get back, you got to go to Weight, weight Watchers. You can eat whatever the fuck you want. You know, instead of eating 20 pieces of chicken, you could eat one piece of chicken with a salad. You know? Yeah, exactly. you know, we'll, give it a we'll talk about it Monday. I love you guys. Thank you very much for paying attention and for watching and stay black. Sticky, stickem.com. Get it together, cocksuckers. I'm watching. You know I love you. Here's some Black Sabbath war pigs. Go out to the world on that fucking note, cocksuckers. This Jew is making a comeback today. <laughs>